Hi, I'm Dr. Rich. Thanks for joining me. Today's x-ray we have is a little unusual. It's a mixed dentition. So basically, this is a kid. I believe he's 9, 10 years old at the time this x-ray was taken. And something a little bit different compared to the adult ones we've been uh, looking at. So if you're new to reading dental x-rays, please check out my prior video, How to Read a Panoramic X-ray. I go through the basics as to what you're looking at what side, how how the x-ray is set up, what you're looking at, the basic landmarks. I'm going to go over some of that today, but I might not cover everything. So if you need a refresher or again, if you're new, check that out, please. I'll leave a link to it up on the card there and then also down in the description. So you can always check it out. Thanks so much. I actually have a whole playlist of reading dental x-ray videos that you might find interesting. All right. So this one looks like there's a lot going on because you can actually see the adult teeth. You see the baby teeth still that are there. So let's start from the beginning. First thing I'm going to point out is just some artifacts that artifacts are things that show up on the x-ray but are actually not on the person or in the person's body. Uh, so the first one that you can see it's this round circle right in the middle in between the teeth with a plus sign in it. That's just the bite stick. That's the plastic stick that is inserted in the x-ray machine and helps aids in positioning the person when you take the x-ray. So the person bites down on it and so that's just the cross section that, of it that you, you can see. Again the whitish kind of area down here at the bottom just all around in that area that is just shadowing from the spinal column because right in the middle there the the x-ray beam is directly behind the person's head and then the film or the recept the sensor is right in front of it so it's passing through the spinal col column and it looks a little whiter on there this bright white here that you can see up across there that again is an artifact that's actually most likely the person's hard palate roof of the mouth uh, it's again just because of how the person's positioned and the way the beam is passing through on angle it's a big pretty long stretch of bone that it's passing through so again it blocks most of the x-rays and it looks white and then the last artifact that i can see on here is this kind of long kind of sausage shaped dark area it almost like you, know, you look at it think oh my god is that a big hole there or something that is just the airspace in the person's mouth. So normally when we take ex panoramic x-rays, we always tell everybody, relax, push your tongue up against the roof of your mouth and leave it there while the machine's spinning around. This, in this case, again, was a young child, so they let their tongue drop down. So that's probably why you can see this uh, space isn't even. It's a little thinner on one side and a little thicker on the other side, they probably moved their tongue around a bit well during the x-ray and didn't leave it in position. All right, so again, I, with x-rays, when I'm reading x-rays, I like to start on the person's right-hand side. So again, we're x-ray set up as if I'm looking at that person. I check out the bottom jaw and work my way around and check out the upper jaw. Condyles get cut off on this x-ray. Sure, if that's part of the x-ray or just when I edited the photo, edited the x-ray to fit into the frame of the video. Can't see the condyles. Again, young kid not having any trouble opening, closing, chewing, that sort of stuff. So let's look in the bottom right jaw, way in the back. I can see three molars here. The first molar is actually fully developed. You can see the two roots of it, the mesial root, distal root, huge, huge nerve space in there. And that's very common on young teeth. First molar comes in when the person's about six years old. And over time, that nerve space does shrink up. Right behind it is the second molar. And again, you can see here, you can see the crown is fully formed. I can see part of the nerve space, but no roots yet. Nothing there at all. So this tooth comes in with, will erupt when the person's about 12. So it's not in yet. You can actually see this is the gum still covering it. And then behind that, way in the back, that's a wisdom tooth. That's And again, that's early on. You can only see the crown of it. All right. So going forward, there's two deciduous molars. These are baby teeth and these end up getting replaced. You can see the front one here, the first one, has most of the root kind of eaten away with, by the adult premolar that's coming up. And then the one behind it has a little bit more of the root left. And again, you can see the crown of the adult premolar is fully formed. So as these adult teeth come up, it causes the roots on the baby teeth to resorb, to basically shrink away, get eaten away by the body. And then once their roots are gone, tooth gets loose, falls out, 
adult tooth comes in. In front of this though, you can see this is the adult canine right here. And the person was, uh, person's already missing their baby tooth, but, and there's the canine. So part of the reason I took this panoramic x-ray was to check on how the canines are doing because I was a little concerned what I saw clinically. I'll talk about that some more when, when we get to the uppers because that's where I was really the most concerned with. So there should be enough room for it when it comes in. What will usually happen too is the baby molars, the deciduous molars, are actually wider than the adult premolars. So once those fall out, there's usually enough room for the adult teeth to come in, and there's actually some spacing, and then that'll get closed up as the teeth shift around. Then we go over to the bottom incisors. These are the four incisors, the two laterals on the ends, and then the two central incisors in front. They're all there. And then next to that, there's still right here, this is the deciduous, the baby canine, baby first molar, baby second molar. And this second molar has got a white filling in it that you can just see kind of blocky L shape over here. There was one on the other side as well, a little harder to see. And this is part of the reason why I was concerned because the person was missing the baby canine on the right side, but the left side was still there. And then I look in and I'm worried there's not enough, not going to be enough room for all the adult teeth. So, but I could see that the adult tooth is there but it's not loving the angle so I'm worried it's going to start affecting the incisor from what I can see here so in bottom line after I saw this x-ray patients recommended that the patient see a orthodontist for a consultation probably going to need some ortho as they in the next few years mom was not very happy to hear that all right behind the deciduous molars we have the first molar again it's fully developed you can see the roots roots are actually the apices are pretty much fully developed big nerve space in that tooth again and then behind it we have the second molar this one's getting close to to erupting you can still see the gum covering it but again it's just the crown of it you can see the nerve space no roots now everybody oh Always want ask me why do teeth have nerves what's the point of having nerves well on this tooth you have the second molar and then the, the third molar again you can the third molar you can see the crown and then big nerve space the nerves are there to help guide the tooth as it's growing and as it's developing before it erupts and so once the tooth is fully erupt, it's the nerves there, but it's a vestigial. You don't really need it. It doesn't serve a purpose after that anymore. So that's why as you get older and, you know, get a cavity, it goes into the nerve, you can have a root canal to save it. You can get the nerve from inside the tooth amputated and it doesn't cause any problems. So again, got the wisdom tooth back here. Now let's go to the top left hand side. All the way in the back, we got a wisdom tooth way, way up high, really, really up high near, up near the sinus there. Second molar there, that's the adult tooth. And then the first molar is fully in and erupted as well. Then next to that, I can see in the mouth, there's the first and second primary molars, and then the canine is still present as well. And then up above them, I look, I can see second premolar, first premolar, and then there's the canine way up high, just pretty much up under the nose. Now, the reason I was concerned is because, again, this person had the canines on their left side, both top and bottom, the primary canines. We're missing them on the right side. And normally, once the canines are getting close to erupting, you can feel them. You can see them kind of bulging through the gum up above the teeth. You can feel them with your fingers when I'm doing my exam. In this case, I couldn't feel them. I couldn't see any obvious bulges. So we took the x-ray to see what's going on. And from what I can see here on this x-ray, the the canine's gotten crowded out. It's way up there. It's basically, it's impacted. Uh, so the orthodontist is going to have uh, some work cut out for him. They're going to have to pull that down into position. Next to that, you can see the lateral incisor, the two central incisors, and the other lateral incisor. And again, that black is just the airspace in the mouth because the person's tongue wasn't up and out of the way. So because of that, though, it kind of washes out. I can't see the roots fully. But again, this side on the upper right-hand side, they're missing the primary canine and then way up here is the permanent one and again it's so far up there and it's getting crowded out by the premolars it's not going to come in on its own it's it's stuck up there it's impacted so both of these are going to have to be pulled down into place even the lower canines i think they'll be okay but there's a chance they may be especially the bottom left hand side one may be impacted as well so yeah, uh, that you know he's going to need some surgery to uncover them, expose them, and then the orthodontist will pull them down with a chain. Next to that, I can see the first 
premolar, second premolar, there where they're supposed to be. And I can see the two deciduous molars on the upper right hand side. So, but again, you can see from as to how much space there is between the first molar and the lateral incisor. To me, it only looks like there's enough room for the two premolars. It does not look to be enough room for the canine. So again, the orthodontist will have to address that. Looking in the back, I see the first molar develop. And then this side of the x-ray ended up being a little whiter. So it's a little harder to see, but there's the second molar there. And again, way in the back, just the crown of the wisdom tooth so far up in the end. So hope you guys found this interesting. Any questions, comments, please leave them below. I try to get to everything. Uh, and thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks. Bye-bye.